Seattle area. Uh, the governor first became involved in public service in 1985 when he and his wife Trudy helped lead the effort to build a new public high school in Salem, Washington. Motivated to fight against uh, proposed funding cuts for rural schools, our governor went on to represent the 14th Legislative District in the State House of Representatives. He continued serving communities in the Agamaw Valley when he was elected to the Congress in 1992. The Inslees later moved back to the Puget Sound area where Jay was elected to Congress in 1998, serving until 2012. As governor, he has made historic investments in education several of which you'll notice have directly impacted those of us in the room and certainly those of us here at Bates Technical College. Under his leadership, the state has made the largest investment in early learning, a nice pair bond for our large early learning program at Bates. He's provided funding for all day kindergarten and small class sizes in K through three. He's first in the nation tuition reductions for all college students, sent a signal that many states followed and we're very proud of that. He allocated more than $3 billion in funding for K through 12 basic education, increased the financial aid opportunities in higher education, and increased the teacher training and mentoring programs for not only our K through 12 friends, but our post-secondary friends. Please help me welcome our governor, Jay Inslee. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's good to be in, uh, in a room with such great leaders, Mayor Strickland, the city of Destiny. Uh, we got uh, Brian Ebersol, who's been such a great leader. Ron, thanks for your, your leadership. Uh, Lee Nugent, where's Lee? Where'd Lee go? Lee, thanks for your leadership and so many efforts. I really appreciate being with you here this morning. And I want to tell you, this is a kind of a, a fulfillment of an obligation I've had for about 50 years now, and this goes back to about 1964. Um, my dad was a coach at Self High School, and he, a basketball coach, you mentioned basketball, this is what made me think of it, Ron, and he was playing the first game of the state tournament against Stadium High School, and they had a guy named Charlie Williams, who was the number one player, he went on to play in the NBA. My dad's team didn't have a chance. But by some miracle, uh, they pulled off a victory against Stadium High School. And Stadium was the number one ranked team in the nation at the time, or the state at the time. And my dad told me, he says, son, you know, uh, those stadium players felt really badly after that game. If you ever have a, a chance, do something nice for Tacoma someday. <laughs> and so I made sure that the very first governor's apprenticeship conference is right here in the city of Destiny in Bates. And I feel so glad to be here. I got to speak at the Bates commencement and to see those optimistic shiny faces of the students and families. And it was as great an honor as, as speaking at Harvard or Stanford or even Washington State University. And so I really am glad to see what's going on here and to be part of this revolution. It is the best place to have a first ever governor's youth apprenticeship because we're focusing on creating more opportunities to connect young people with great careers and not having to wait till after high school for them to figure out how great these careers can be. We're one of six states to get a grant from the National Governors Association specifically designed to create a policy framework to increase work-based learning for our youth while in school. And this summit is part of that work. Specifically, we're here today to learn from other states that are already experiencing success in this regard. It's my pleasure to welcome representatives from the states of Oregon, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Wisconsin here today. I do want to note for the, for the basis of our guests from Oregon and the friends of the Oregon Ducks, that the University of Washington and Washington State University does have a good apprenticeship football. <laughs> so we know, uh, that was just a friendly needle. We put up with that for nine years. Okay? So, we have to say something like this. 
So we are, uh, we do look forward to sharing ideas with leaders from other states. What we learned today is going to help us uh, build our critical, take us to the next level, to really get a critical mass of political support to take this effort to the next level. It's a whole new way of looking at our educational system that we're about today. Because we know that a four-year track is not the only way to succeed in our state. And for too long, we have been creating this implicit, tacit message to our youth that the only way to succeed is to get a four-year degree. That's bunk. You can succeed in a million ways in other ways. Yep. And today, we're going to set the stage. <laughs> so we have some grassroots efforts we know already underway. And I am so excited about this pilot program between the Aerospace Joint Apprenticeship Committee, the Tacoma School District, and Bates Technical College to launch an apprenticeship program while in schools. 15 high school students in this region will be employed as apprenticeship production technicians. It's a very first step in a long-term strategic vision. We're interested in scaling this model up across the K-12 system in as many as 10 additional high school sites just in the next year or so. Now, as governor, I am a big believer in apprenticeship programs for three reasons. First, because they really are the key to training people for real family wage jobs. That's why we ought to be strengthening and expanding pre-apprenticeship programs in our school. Uh, right now, the median age of an apprenticeship, apprentice in the state of Washington is 27. As far as I'm concerned, that's almost a lost decade for young people. Now, it's great that people are figuring out when they're 27 or 28, but why not 16, 17, and 18? That ought to be our goal. So youth apprenticeship aims to change that. It's a great thing when someone can graduate from high school one day and be a registered apprentice the next day. When I arrived today, I met a young fellow named Jesse Mulbrook. Graduated from Enumclaw Eno, High School on a, and on his own signed up for an apprenticeship program while still in high school. You could say he's the Bill Boeing of the apprenticeship program. He's now employed full time in advanced manufacturing and continuing his education through the AJAC apprenticeship program. Now, when I, where do you, you sit right here? Okay, now when I step off the stage or I'm done with my speech, I'm going to go pin a little pin on him. This is a Washington apple pin. This is a governor's Washington pin I wear it every day. And I get to honor the most inspirational person in the state that I meet that day. It's the Washingtonian of the day. And when I step on this, off this podium, uh, I'm going to give uh, Jesse Malbreth the Washingtonian of the day award, if that's okay with you, pal. <laughs> reason I believe so strongly is because too often we hear about a lack of opportunity for youth employment in our communities. This contributes to what we do call the decade drift, that lost decade. In fact, in 2014 report to the state legislature, the State Workforce and Education Training Board said this delayed entry into the workforce has serious repercussions for these young adults. It pushes individual incomes down. It reduces lifetime earning potential, and it affects the long-term employability of a generation of workers. So we need to help our young people find the right career path sooner rather than later. And by the way, we shouldn't look at just other states. We're looking at other countries. I talked to Brad Smith, who just returned from Switzerland. He's chief counsel of the Microsoft company. He just returned looking at their apprenticeship programs in Switzerland with as much as, I think it was many as 50% of their, of their students in high school are in some apprenticeship program. Their young adult unemployment rate is no greater than any other age group in Switzerland. It's like 3.6%. Now imagine how great it would be as if we have just as high an unemployment rate for 22-year-olds as we do for 45-year-olds in our state. That ought to be something we shoot for, and that's the kind of work we're engaged in right here. The third reason this is so important to me is because youth apprenticeship leverage is one of our state's most effective workforce development investments, which is registered apprenticeships. The 
apprenticeship model is the gold standard of work-based learning. It gives students a clear connection between what they learn in the classroom and what they do on the job. And we know this has a positive effect on our graduation rate. When kids see a connection between school and work, they're more likely to stay in school and graduate on time. Look, to have a reason to sit in an algebra class is a good reason to stay in school. And we need to give those students a reason to be in algebra class. And that's what these programs do fundamentally. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what ideas are going to come from this summit. Before I conclude, I want to say a few words about our paramount duty here in Washington, which is to fully fund basic education. Now, we know we've made some progress in funding education. We've put in $5.5 billion of new money. This is the largest expansion of educational investment in the history of the state of Washington. It's done great things. It's given kids more early child education. We're having full day kindergarten for the first time in the history of the state. We're reducing class sizes in kindergarten through third grade. We have a new mentorship program for new teachers so that they can get better classroom management skills. We got new increased pay for hardworking teachers. And we're the only state in the whole country that's reduced tuition for every single student in our public colleges. And by the way, I'm proud of the fact that we made sure that includes community colleges and technical colleges as well, not just four-year colleges. But we know we got more work to do. We know we've got to take the next step in this school funding uh, program. But we've got to look at this McCleary decision not just a weight on a shoulder, our shoulders, but rather as a door that we can open to new and better career technical education in our schools. <laughs> so as we go through, uh, through the 2017 uh, legislature, I hope that you are going to be engaged in working with legislators to see to it that in solving this McCleary challenge, we're not just replacing local dollars with state dollars, which we're going to do. Uh, I've got people to make a commitment to do that. But also opening up whole, whole new ways of career technical education, whole new ways of getting people introduced at age 14 or 15 to a potential career. So their eyes light up when they can see themselves being a machinist, build the next carbon fiber jet for Boeing or whoever else. So that's the, the goal we got to have in the 2017 session. I hope you're each going to be active in getting legislators to be as excited as we are here this morning. Because if we do that, we're going to have a lot more kids doing great technical work in the state of Washington. And so uh, good luck to all of us. And we'll see you at the uh, National uh, Football Championship. Either, <laughs> either the Huskies or Cougars will be playing. Next slide. Take care. <laughs>